Hi, Mila. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. <laughs> Good. Where are you? Um, I'm at Foxman School of Music on the University of Iowa campus. Where? Um, in Iowa City, Iowa. In Iowa City, Iowa. Yeah. Great. Well, good to uh, connect with you. Um, as you uh, know, this is a multi-part series we're doing on the faces and stories of those who were fellows uh, for the 2017 Summer of Defiance for Planned Parenthood. Yeah. So this is going to be part of, um, this is part of Grass Tops, which is published by Grassroots Campaigns GCI. So it's great to, uh, to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great. Why don't you start by telling us who you are and your story and, and how you got involved? Okay, well, I am currently a junior at the University of Iowa studying history, music, and gender, women's, and sexuality studies. Um, so I got here as um, I have always been involved in activist kind of causes, um, organizations. I hadn't really done something as direct as this fellowship but with the past election and with kind of getting more involved on my campus and in my community, um, I saw the fellowship with uh, Planned Parenthood and Change Corps and uh, Grassroots Voter Outreach as the next step. Um, but yeah, so here I am, um, and basically it was just my way of exploring different realms of activism, um, getting more involved in the resistance. Great. What, um, what in your life has inspired you to pursue being a, a Planned Parenthood fellow? Um, I was raised um, in Iowa. I, I'm a native Iowan. I was raised in a progressive family. Um, Planned Parenthood has always been something that my family and my mom in particular has cared about. Um, it's something that my family members have needed and utilized. Um, it's something that's really important to me as a native Iowan, understanding how rural communities um, in particular are um, disadvantaged in finding quality and affordable health care. Um, so that's kind of how I got to be passionate about Planned Parenthood. How do you? How did you feel when you were uh, accepted as a Planned Parenthood fellow? Uh, I was thrilled. Um, it really just felt like the next step in the kind of work I want to be doing as a career in the long term. Uh, it felt like something that I could really make a tangible difference in, um, maybe even the first thing that I could do um, that would really make a difference since the election in November. Cool. What, um, why don't you tell us what what is the Summer of Defiance, or what was it, and why is it important, particularly to Iowa, Iowa City? And, well, yeah, sure. you, you were based in Des Moines. Yeah, I was. I did the fellowship in Des Moines, but, um, well, basically, the Summer of Defiance was a four-week-long, um, almost five-week campaign um, that was launched in cities across the um, entire country. But um, Des Moines, Iowa was actually one of the cities, so um, we started with a four-day regional training with the Indiana Fellows um, in downtown Des Moines, where we uh, met progressive activists and organizers um, with all kinds of experience working across the country. Um, and there we learned skills from um, like telling personal stories, telling campaign stories, um, all kinds of canvassing, uh, advocacy writing. Um, all kinds of things, communicating with your communicating with your community and with people who don't agree with you. Uh, so we did all that kind of training there, and we continued it throughout the four weeks because um, the campaign was kind of aimed at um, training new activists and organizers um, to go on and use these skills in all kinds of other ways and in um, doing state specific goals. So um, Iowa's goals were um, to hold Governor Reynolds accountable for the defunding of Planned Parenthood in Iowa, which has actually already happened. Um, but our governor, um, Governor Kim Reynolds, she stayed silent throughout the defunding. And um, so what we wanted to do was uh, get the word out about the effects of the defunding in Iowa and um, kind of tell people that um, Governor Reynolds is refusing to make a public statement, refusing to speak out, even though um, like thousands of Iowans lost health care and 77 percent of Iowans actually do stand with Planned Parenthood. And uh, how did it go? Um, it went really well. We were actually kind of blown away by the amount of support that we received. Um, like every time we would go out canvassing, we'd find um, like just hundreds of supporters like on the streets. We went canvassing at the Des Moines Farmers Market one morning and um, our volunteers just we probably picked up around 400 over. I don't even know <laughs> hundreds of postcards just that one day in one place because it was just 
like astounding to see how many Iowans really uh, want to stand up for Planned Parenthood and how many just are lacking the platform or the knowledge to get involved. It was amazing to kind of get those people uh, started. What were Iowans saying? Um, well, we actually found a lot of Iowans that were just surprised that um, this had happened. They had no idea that four clinics had closed as a result of the defunding. They had um, no idea that all this was happening, really. And um, they just uh, were really interested in learning about uh, how they, what they could do, what the next steps are, since it has been defunded and it will actually take a long time to make any progress towards restoring um, health care here. Um, so we were really just amazed by the people who had so many questions about, like, how did this happen? What happened with the legislative session? Um, like, what are the ways I can get involved, uh, like, long term? Yeah. So what were, what were some of the things that you did as a part of, besides the farmer's market, uh, as a part of Summer of Defiance in Iowa? Yeah, so one of the big things we did was just canvassing. We did postcarding, we did phone banking, like hours long phone banks. We uh, they're actually great. We found a ton of supports that way. Um, but we also held a day of action. Um, one Saturday we had like a four hour event where we had uh, supporters come in. Um, they did phone banking. They did letter writing to Governor Reynolds. Um, they wrote letters to the editor. Um, they did all kinds of actions just to hold Governor Reynolds accountable, and um, that was a really fun way to connect with them. We also attended a lot of local health care rallies and local uh, visits to, um, like, Congressman uh, or Representative David Young's um, office, and um, we just went along with a lot of other progressive groups to um, stand up for health care and, like, kind of participate in the national fights for health care that were going on at the same time. Was there a moment where you really felt the most proud about what you were doing? Um, yeah, well, I kind of felt that way every day, I think. Um, but I would guess one particular time would be um, we went to the Our Lives on the Line healthcare rally, um, and that there were like a ton of progressive groups there, and tons of speakers. Um, it was a really fun event. Um, there were like all the local groups, like we have one called Indivisible Iowa. Um, just groups like that, um, they were all there. They were all super supportive of Planned Parenthood and wanting to get involved beyond their own forms of activism, get involved in Planned Parenthood, and kind of participate in our um, struggle as well. It was just really uplifting to see all those people who were so uh, committed to Planned Parenthood and to reproductive justice. Great. How many uh, other fellows were part of your team? Um, in Des Moines, we had four other fellows. I think, yeah, we had five total. Um, yeah, we had probably one of the smaller teams, but we all worked really well together, and it's a great time. How How did you feel about the camaraderie that you had, the sisterhood or the brotherhood? <laughs> yeah, it was, I don't know, we all clicked together really well. I mean, we're all around the same age, but we have really different backgrounds, really different like college paths, things like that. Um, but I think that just it was easy to connect working for Planned Parenthood, working for something so specific and something that we were all so on board with and committed to. Were, were there any challenges over throughout the four weeks of the Summer of Defiance? Um, there were some challenges. Um, I guess the main thing was just like keeping up the morale of like supporters and everything in the face of the defunding because it's just so hard to see a longer term picture where we make real tangible progress and uh, restore reproductive justice in Iowa. So kind of um, just keeping the morale up, telling people what they can do, um, getting people to stay in the fight, even if it seems like it's going to go on forever. I would say that was the main thing. So how about some tips? What are some tips? Um, you're now a, a more experienced local organizer. You were a fellow for the Planned Parenthood Summer of Defiance. What are some tips for future organizers, especially on the ground in a place like, like Des Moines, Iowa? Um, I would say don't underestimate the um, community you're working in. I know that a lot of people in Iowa kind of tend to think that um, – like, people aren't going to be super receptive to things like Planned Parenthood. They're, um, they, they even do a little bit of, like, profiling, like, oh, does this person look like they support Planned Parenthood? Um, but you really kind of have to look past that and 
understand that any person that you're approaching, any person you're calling could be your next great supporter, your next, um, like star volunteer. Um, and then I would say just, um, make sure that you're being inclusive in the way that you're getting people involved as well. If people don't like, or aren't comfortable with phone banking or something like that, there's still so many other ways they can get involved. So just keep it open, give your volunteers like endless options for what they can do. Um, make activism be an inclusive thing, like, um, speak to their strengths. Those are my main tips. What do you think resonated with your target um, there more? Like, what worked better, in your opinion? Um, I think that the, um, just the pure, like, amount of, like, tangible evidence that we had that um, I wouldn't support Planned Parenthood and that they disagree with um, her lack of acknowledgement even of the defunding um because we who, had who do you mean the governor um the governor reynolds uh well when we were trying to uh target her as um the person that we were trying to get to make a public statement about planned parenthood we were delivering um like over 70 letters handwritten letters uh we had some lte's in the newspaper letter um and we also made it like around 200 phone calls into her office and all this was happening in the short amount of time, I think that that amount of materials in that short amount of time should have put a lot of pressure on her. And we also got some media attention. So just all of that compounded, I think, should make a difference. Do you remember where you placed the letters to the editor? What newspapers? Um, we had one in the Ames Tribune that was actually one of our own fellows, um, Tess DiBartolo. She Her actually got published published there. I cannot remember where the other one was, but we submitted them to local newspapers all across the state, and um, we might even have more published by now. Great. How do you feel about everything that was achieved? How are you feeling? I feel great about it. Um, I think that it's really good that we had a campaign targeting um, Governor Reynolds, um, like just at a time where she it's like she's the, she's a new governor in Iowa, and I think that we really made it clear to her that Iowans aren't going to put up with um, a lack of attention to uh, services that are crucial, like Planned Parenthood. Um, so I think it was really good to put this pressure on her, especially in the short amount of time, and have such a targeted, focused campaign. Great. Well, what does this mean going forward now uh, in Iowa? Like summer of, um, of defiance. Like, what does it mean for the future of of women's health and women's rights and healthcare? Yeah, I mean, we have a really long um, fight ahead of us um, with the defunding and everything. I mean, four clinics closed and fourteen thousand six hundred without care could be just the beginning. But I think that um, as long as, especially young people, young people in college with um, so many ways to get involved. Uh, I think we're all in it for the long run, and um, I know that I am. I think that the next steps are just to continue uh, advocating. I'm going to join my local um, Gen Action group on campus, um, get involved in all kinds of volunteering. Um, I think also just making sure that people in states across the country understand the catastrophe that Iowa is facing right now because of the defunding, um, making that clear to other people, and uh, just showing what an impact Planned Parenthood has on um, people all across our state and what an impact the organization has across the country. If you had a few more weeks to the Summer of Defiance, uh, what would you have done? Anything else you would have wanted to do that you didn't maybe didn't get to do? Um, I would say that doing some more targeting of Governor Reynolds would be great if we could uh, do some more direct office visits, try to speak to her directly, because we had our empty chair town hall, which she did not show up to. Um, but just getting to speak with her directly and make sure that she hears our concerns and acknowledges them, um, that would have been great. And I also think that some more work with our um, representatives in Congress and the Senate, um, I think that that also would have been great, uh, because all of our, well, we have several um, representatives for our state who just are very anti-choice and who have consistently voted um, in ways that are going to affect health care and Planned Parenthood funding um, in very bad ways. Are the other fellows, your fellow fellows, are, are they uh, with you in Iowa? 
Do you see them now still? Yeah, we made plans to um, kind of keep uh, hanging out after the fellowship ended, but it's hard because a lot of us are still in college and the others are looking for jobs right now. So um, we've still been messaging like every day, um, but we'll probably try to make sure that we see each other in the future and maybe even volunteer together. Hopefully, maybe we'll even end up working for Planned Parenthood or something in the future. Great. Well, is there any message you'd like to send them through through this? Um, I guess I'd just say that I appreciate all the work they're doing. I appreciate um, how committed they are to this, and I would love to work with all of them again. And until then, I hope they stay um, committed. Um, that's about it, though. Great. Thank you, Mila. Hey, are you going to get over to the uh, Iowa State Fair? At all, it's happening right now, right? <laughs> we actually, the fellows made plans to do that, but um, living in Iowa my whole life, I've been enough times I don't need any more fried food, <laughs> so I don't well, think I'll make it. If you go, will you do me a favor? <laughs> yeah, sure. Take a selfie with the butter cow, tweet it um, to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, Mila, thank you so much for your leadership and your service. Yeah, sure. And thanks thanks so for, much for all you do as well. Thank you for speaking with us today. Yeah, it's great. Keep in touch. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.